Alright, this video is going to briefly go over the idea of convexity and how it relates to strict convexity. Um, the most important thing to remember when distinguishing between the two is that strict convexity implies that the second derivative, or f, double prime of x, is greater than zero. If it's equal to zero, then that implies that the line can be straight or linear. There's no slope associated with it. So in layman's terms, a line with strict convexity or a curve with strict convexity is going to have a slope. So in this example here with this graph, only one of the lines is strictly convex, the one with the slope. These other two lines are simply convex or linear. Now, with respect to microeconomics and utility theory, uh, one of the ideas that's put forward is that if there's a point of tangency between a budget line and an indifference curve, then the indifference curve must be well-behaved or we have well-behaved pre preferences and that there's strict convexity going on. We can see an example here of a tangency point with a linear budget constraint line, a strictly convex curve here, our indifference curve, and where they're tangent, the slopes are the same. They just barely touch each other. If the indifference curve, say line D and C, isn't strictly convex, then it can be linear. In this example here, a linear indifference curve with a linear budget constraint line only touch at one point C, so there's still a point where they touch, they intersect, but they're not tangent. They don't share the same slope. You'll also notice that when we have a linear indifference curve, we consume only one of the goods. This is not an interior solution. An interior solution occurs where we have both of the goods being consumed because we assume that averages are preferred to extreme values of either one good or the other. You can see an example of this with respect to strict convexity because of this bowed in shape. We can see that if we want to substitute a little bit of x, we're going to have to get a lot of y. Likewise, if we're over here, we have to get a lot of x to give up a little bit of y. But when we're towards the middle and away from the extremes, the trade-off or the marginal rate of substitution is much less for both of the goods. So that's, in summary, a brief description of convexity versus strict convexity, how it relates to trade-offs or the marginal rate of substitution, and how tangency points relate to budget constraints and indifference curves exhibiting these ideas.